Hello everybody, today we'll di I'll discuss the other solidification techniques and we ha last class we have learned the rapid solidification processes. There is another solidification process that is called the semi-solid processing. I mean to say that it is heavy link with the, it is one kind of the manufacturing technology or manufacturing processes and that is uh, occurs uh, in the form of a partially solid or semi-solid metal and this semi-solid metal is used for the working uh, in, uh, for any other uh, linking with the any other manufacturing process. So, that is why semi-solid processing itself having certain advantage as compared to the complete liquid or uh, complete uh, solid component. Since the semi-solid is basically I can say that partially solidified metal or certain solidification fraction in the mercy zone is uh, there. So, that is why we put it in under solidification processing uh, this, this particular semi-solid processing technique. So, we understand that the semi-solid processing technique it is the working temperature is between the solidus and liquidus temperature for a particular material. And we see that the between the solidus and liquidus temperature and one particular composition and then uh, these things we, we, we follow with the um, manufacturing or processing of the semi-solid material in such a way that it, it creates some kind of the this uh, critical values of the solidified fraction when the when it is in the mercy zone and then after that we do kind of the some kind of the mechanical uh, shearing of this particular uh, this uh, partially uh, solidified component over the liquid such that we can make we can represent the complete uh, component in the form of a like a slurry uh, this thing. So, that is why this semi solid processing is a manufacturing technique in which partially solid or semi solid metal is basically used for the working. In this case metal this materials exhibits both the solid and a liquid uh, the state properties of the solid and liquid and because of the semi, semi solid nature. So, already mentioned the working range of the temperature is between the solid as a liquid as temperature for a particular material. But if we look into the semi solid, uh, semi -solid component or metal behaves like a non-Newtonian fluid that means, it is basically the shear stress velocity they relate in terms of the, the non-linear relations exist. And it is represented like that. So, once partially solidified occurs, it uh, we can treat it is a kind of the particles and uh, particles and um, available with the remaining liquid and that behaves like a slurry. So, in that way we represent the any kind of the uh, semi solid processing or uh, semi solid component uh, particularly associated with the solidification of the metal. So, therefore, a semi solid slurry we can say like that uh, semi solid slurry in this case with a fraction of the solid higher than 0 0.2 it actually behaves like a non-Newtonian non fluid. So, it means that this the semi solid slurry it is might be having certain critical values of the, the solid component will be there. And definitely when you try to look into the complete solidification process at the very early stage the so when there is a growth of the particular uh, com that uh, grains move and in this cases grains can move freely because it is not having so much of obstacles with the presence of the other grains. So, you see that is happens is very initial stage of the solidification, but in this case the solidification stage the grains can move freely and it can settle one uh, it can settle down in that way, but when you reaching certain critical fraction of the solidified component then it forms a kind of the network and in that case mass feeding is replaced by the interdendritic feeding during the solidification process in process. I mean to say that the grains form a network means uh, initially the it is a small small grain or I can this structure small grain uh, can be created and this can move freely without any obstacles. But after certain time that primary dendritic arm, secondary dendritic arm so, they can create a kind of the network structure. So, when the, it creates kind of the network structure, uh, then the feeding of the liquid metal is mass feeding is difficult in this cases rather interdendriting feeding is possible uh, after certain period of the time. So, that is the uh, that is the uh, that way we can we can explain the 
solidification behavior uh, of a particular uh, metal. Now, semi solid processing we can represent the semi solid processing a kind of the hybrid process between the casting and the forming process, uh, sorry, forging process. So, it combines the form of form of freedom of casting because in case of the casting process, once uh, the casting process is allowed to do the perform the solidification, we can there there might be having some homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation process to occur and gradually the nucleation forms and it is try to grow and then we can we can expect certain specific structure or microstructure for a cast component after solid uh, after solidification. So, we can see that some part it is the that uh, <coughs> equiac structure near about the mold wall then gradually it can follow some columnar dendritic structure and at the middle point we can expect the equiac kind of the structure. So, this is the typical behavior in a uh, casting process and in that cases uh, is so we can say that it this it uh, the form freedom of the casting is maintained then only we getting this kind of the structure. But in this cases if the material quality uh, of forging if we, if we try to further deform the material that means after when reaching certain critical values of the solidified component during solidification after that if we try to follow some kind of shearing action all these things it is producing uh, some specific structure more or less kind of the equi-x kind of the structure or more the equal size of the grains is usually produced. So, that is the typical behavior of the, the semi-solid processing structure as compared to the only the cast, cast component. So, here you can say that it combines the freedom of the casting at the same time is the material quality it will produce and of the forging process need to apply in these cases. So, combining these two casting and the forging operation this actually the rapid production speed is possible here and of course, excellent control over the tolerance. So, tolerance levels can be very precisely controlled in this particular uh, the semi solid processing techniques because if we observe that even for the casting process also we need to some sinkage is there and sinkage may hap happen uh, at one particular position such that complete change the volumetric shape will change to accommodate the shrinkage volume of these things. Even there is a need of the riser to accommodate the shrinkage volume in case of the pure casting operation, casting process. But in this case if we process the material in such way that allowing the solidification, partially solidification at, at the same time we perform the forging operation also in this case, then it is possible to produce one specific structure and that uh, different kind of the issues is possible to avoid what we observe in case of the casting solidification process. At the same time some close tolerances excellent control is possible uh, in, in case of the semi solid processing technique. So, in principle the shearing is continuously applied to metal during the solidification. So, during this process, there is a shearing action is performed in this metal and as the temperature drops below the liquidus temperature therefore, a slight increase in the shear stress is also noticed that means when the below the liquidus temperature they started forming the, the solidified component then mixture of the solid and liquid we observe in the mucision also. So, once we start forming the solidification comp uh, component then there is a need the to the much amount of the shear stress is observed in this particular cases. So, that is the the main thing is the shear component is associated with the semi solid processing technique. So, that we can observe. Now, even normal solidification process there might be having from the dendritic structure. Now, if we compare the dendritic and non dendritic material uh, in we can we can we can we can observe that in which cases there is a need of the shear stress is more or less. So, for a dendritic solidified material the shear stress is actually higher. So, we can say that dendritic solidified material the shear stress required is the higher as compared to the non dendritic material of course, or the having of the same solid fraction. So, same solid fraction in case of the dendritic solid structure we need the more amount of the shear as compared to the non dendritic material. So, that we observe and that is the uh, basically the basic features if we compare if we control the dendritic structure or non-dendritic structure depends on that the shear stress requirement is much more in these two different kind of the structure. We can take an example also 
for example, the 200 kilopascal is the shear stress of 200 kilopascal is observed with a dendritic solidified metal. The solidified the having the dendritic structure, dendritic we can say the dendritic solidified metal this is having might be having the shear stress is around 200 kilopascal. But at the with the same solid fraction similar and the say solid fraction equal to 0 0.4 in this case with the same similar solid fraction it creates uh, only 0 0.2 kilopascal uh, shear stress uh, that is for the non dendritic material. So, therefore, it is having some influence on the whether it is a non dendritic structure is formed or dendritic structure is formed based on that shear stress are different in these two cases even for the same amount of the solid fraction in a in, in this when you try to produce the some kind of the semi solid uh, 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 semi solid in this case. Now, here increment of the shear stress the low increment of the shear stress uh, during the semi solid processing indicates that there is a significant microstructural differences between the normal material processing and the semi solid processing. So, we can produce some kind of the component just following the uh, normal material processing there are so other material processing technologies and other cases we can prepare the material by following the semi solid processing. But in this case we can see increment of the shear stress is there the low increment of the shear stress is observed it actually signifies that there must be some kind of the microstructural differences for the normal conventional processing material processing techniques as compared to the, the semi solid processing material or semi solid processed material. Now, how it works the mechanism of the structure evol the evolve during the semi solid processing we can understand that it is a which direction the structure can form in the semi solid processing. Now, suppose when there is no string is applied we see that sometimes uh, during the solidification also the string is applied uh, the st stirring is basically applied in this case is to modify the structure or maybe to modify the solidified structure. So, in this case when there is no steering action is applied. So, we can observe that dendritic structure is observed in the solidified component. So, because we know externally force we are not applying. So, we can expect some kind of the, the dendritic structure uh, allow to kind of the free uh, without um, the solidification without application any kind of the external steering action in that case we can get the, the dendritic structure. Now, if we increase the intensity of the steering that actually changes the microstructure from the solidified material in, in case of the solidified material from dendritic structure to some kind of the other equix kind of the structure, but here equix kind of the structure and that actually followed by the different kind of the sets and final finally it reach to the spheroid kind of the shape in this case the, that we try to understand that in the in case of the semi solid processing that what way the structure is actually formed because in semi solid processing we need we always apply some kind of the shearing action this shearing action helps to change the structure. So, initially dendritic forms now we can see the den, inter, initial dendrite primary dendritic graph, secondary dendritic R, standard it is usually forms. Then we can see the dendritic growth it is a kind of the network it usually forms the, the second I am talking about the second figure we start from here the second figure after certain period of the time there is a dendritic growth actually occurs. Now, with the application of the mechanical shearing in this case we can it create the rosettes kind of the structure you can see this kind of the structure is usually forms further the ripened rosettes is usually this kind of the structure then it is converted to the kind of the spheroid and then the spheroid and finally, it is tend to form kind of the more or less equus, equu, equal grain structure in a after the complete semi solid processing of a particular material. So, here we can see that this kind of the structure you observe the increasing shear rate uh, because we are basically talking about the how the viscosity actually changes of this particular material. So, the viscosity uh, gradually decreases in these cases and with increasing the shear rate. So, change of the shear strain that is actually with respect to time that is actually shear rate. So, we are this kind of the structure you observe the variation of the shear rate and time and of course, at the same time there is a decrement of the cooling rate gradually the 
decrement of the cooling rate along this direction occurs and we expect initial dendritic to this kind of the spherical structure. This is the typical mechanism of the, the uh, in the, the structure forms in case of the semi solid processing techniques. Now, semi solid might be having some kind of the pseudo elasticity uh, sorry pseudo plasticity and which can be defined by this particular relation the viscosity equal to the k into the this is a, a shear rate to the power n minus 1 n is basically indicates some index. So, n is the power law index k constant is a consistency represented in this particular case and k is bas the viscosity is basically represented in the terms of the apparent viscosity which is defined by the ratio of the shear stress and the shear rate stress versus the shear rate. So, tau this is the gamma in that way we represent the apparent viscosity in a semi solid slurry. Semi solid slurry means in the basically associate we already mentioned that it is created as the uh, slurry kind of things where we can expect the certain fraction of the solid fraction is there and, and it is a mixture along with the liquid. So, it create the semi solid slurry the properties defined in terms of the that the apparent viscosity in case of the semi solid component. Now, it is a completely solidified then there is no viscosity in this cases, but it is gradually the high viscosity to low viscosity it transfer during the semi solid processing. So, the viscosity of the slurry during the uh, during cooling phases it actually decreases with increasing the shear rate and the decreasing the cooling rate also that means decreasing the cooling rate and uh, and uh, the along with the the decreasing the cooling rate and increasing with the shear rate. So, increasing the shear rate and decreasing the cooling rate is basically the viscosity of the slurry is gradually decreases in this case. So, this is the typical properties of a semi solid processing or semi solid processed material. Now, increasing the shear rate and decreasing the cooling rate in this cases that actually uh, results in the formation of the dense and the round particle and that can slide with respect to each other with the less interruption because it is easy to move by the round particle in this stack with respect to each other sliding with respect to that. So, we have mentioned here slide over each other without much with much uh, or without much interruption. So, I can say that with the less interruptions this kind of the sliding is usually occurred. So, this is the typical uh, characteristics of a semi solid uh, component or, uh, or we observe during the semi solid processing of a particular material. Now, techniques the methods of producing the non dendritic slurries is very important in, in these cases, uh, these in case of the semi solid uh, processing because non dendritic slurry we observe the requirement of the shear stress is low in this case of the if we try to promote the uh, non dendritic slurry in this case. So, we can avoid the dendritic structure in this case. Now, see continuous mixture is possible in this case with the poor the molten material and continuously mixing allowing to do solidify to occurs and along with the continuous steering action in this within this container and these are the cooling arrangement. So, we can control the, the by some coil is there. So, using this coil uh, we can we can uh, uh, control the rate of the cooling in this case. So, continuous state steering and the cooling into a crucible system uh, within the system uh, in that way we can produce the continuous mixture or we can produce some kind of the uh, slurry or I can then say that this is one of the techniques for the semi solid processing uh, for the material. So, here molten material is put at the same time you just steering action is going on allow to cool or maybe that cooling can be controlled also or other way I can say the uh, rate of heating or rate of temperature change is controlled in this case. And then it is semi solid to come out from here, but uh, there are some issues or difficulties associated with this particular process. So, one problem is the erosion of the ceramic strainer, strainer. So, in this case this, this component is made of usually the ceramic, so erosion might occurs it creates some the dross and gas entrapment because we are just steering of these things which is usually 
uh, you can observe even casting also when the mold casting when the put the liquid metal also you can the, the draws can be created and gas entrapment during the passing of the liquid metal from through the channel um, or the through the runner riser and finally reaching to the the cast um, the mold volume or cast volume so during this process might be having some kind of gas entrapment all these things so the here also since it is associated to the steering action, so might be having gas entrapments occurred. So, this is the one of the problem associated and we can use the ceramic st uh, steerer uh, in this case and we know that is the ceramic stirs having the typical properties. So, for that purposes we can use the ceramic steerer, steerer in this particular case. Now, alternate to mechanically steering the this uh, liquid and other in that case that can be uh, replaced in terms of the magneto hydrodynamic uh, steering process. So, magneto hydrodynamic steering process in this cases the shear stress is produced or shear is generated by rotating the electromagnetic field. So, simply by rotating the by controlling the electromagnetic field or by rotating the electromagnetic field the shearing action is imposed on this particular metal and this process. Uh, can avoid the mechanical steering uh, steering of the liquid metal in this case. So, if we follow this thing the magnetodynamic steering process or in this particular process overall I can say the a material with a uniform fine grain uniform fine grain of 30 micrometer is possible to achieve by following this particular technique. So, it is understood that this aim of the semi solid processing it is a hybrid process casting and forging or maybe I can say that liquid metal when try to solid during the solidification conventional solid process we can use some kind of the mechanical shearing action for the liquid metal at the same time we can allow the cooling all these things. Then finally, structure will reach more or less uniform grain structure we can achieve using the semi solid processing. So, that is the main advantage or main objective to develop the semi solid processing as compared to the conventional casting process or where the conventional solidification occurs uh, and that solidification process can be modified in the converted to the semi solid processing to achieve perfect uh, the particular objective of uniform grains and even very fine grains is possible to produce that is the purpose. There are some other semi solid processing techniques are also there that is one is the shearing cooling roll process. So, in this case it is as simple as that the supporting block is there create these things molten metal is poured here and there is a rotating roll is here. So, when molten metal is contact with the rotating roll and at the same time there is a allowing some cooling down in during this process and thus if we rotate the roll that means by rotating the roll it is possible to apply some kind of the shearing action of over the the semi solid component semi solid means the because it when the molten metal is when pour the molten metal at this particular point. So, here that already started the solidification and certain percentage of the fraction are is uh, is available the solidified over the liquid uh, metal. So, now now further by rotating the tool we can ap apply the shearing action on these things and then complete process of the finally, the semi solid metal will come out from here. So, this is the typical another a very simple mechanism uh, is there to get the semi solid metal in this case. So, here the solidified melt is shared to produce the very fine slurry and aluminum alloy cast iron and steel. This kind of the metal is usually performed using this particular process and it is a grain size of the around 50 micrometer a grain is possible to achieve in this uh, this particular uh, process. Now, there is another process semi solid processing that is uh, water cooled copper plastic is uh, copper plate is used. So, it means that the this is the liquid metal liquid metal is poured on the cooling plate, but this cooling plate having some uh, it is a water cooled cooling plate and this cooling plate might be having some high conductivity may be we can made of the copper also. So, uh, uh, yes it, uh, it is a copper plate it can be used here because we know the continuous casting and other uh, process we usually use the, the copper plate. So, here the whatever cooling action is occurs and of course, the by the gravity force some kind of the due to the gravitational force 
it is already associated with some kind of the sharing action to associate it with the uh, semi solid material. So, once it is from the semi solid when it traveling from this point to that point certain percentage of the due to the in presence of the cooling plate some part will convert it to the, the uh, liquid metal is converted to the, to the uh, solid components and the mixture of the solid and liquid come out in the form of a semi solid and shearing force is applied because of the gravitational force and then this semi is collected within the uh, mold uh, wall the within the mold it, it is collected or then after that we can perform the further cooling also uh, here during this process. So, this is the cooling plate process this process is known as the cooling plate process. So, this is one of the semi solid uh, processing uh, technology, but all these cases we do not have the option to follow some kind of the non dendritic slurry all these cases it create non dendritic slurry not the dendritic slurry because there is no option to create some kind of the dendritic structure because dendritic structure will form if you do not disturb or with the some kind of the external aid the liquid metal. So, that is why if the stationary liquid metal is there allowed to perform the solidification operation in that case it will try to produce some kind of the dendritic structure, but in this case it is always the liquid metal is always moving and some convection current is always available along with the liquid metal that is why there in this all these cases we always produce a non dendritic slurry uh, in the for the during the semi solid processing techniques. Now, overall we can see the advantage of the semi solid processing. So, first thing is the better control over the metal flow which results in the reduced porosity because reduced porosity is possible to achieve because we are handling the not completely liquid metal is suddenly converted to the solid component rather first liquid metal is converted some part is converted to the solid component and then it is a kind of the mixture of the solid and liquid is there and when the mixture of the solid and liquid. So, at that time we are acting the sharing action. So, whatever uh, this um, shrinkage will occur at this stage will be because of the mechanical sharing all will be accommodated during the sharing operation. So, that is why this is the uh, the semi solid processing it is possible to produce the reduced porosity and metal flow can also be controlled because metal flow can also be controlled the way we are changing the viscosity from the pure liquid metal to the semi solid material. So, that is why the by changing the viscosity we can control the flow is more controlled way can be done and reduced porosity is achieved using the semi solid processing. So, this is one of the advantage uh, of this particular technique. Second is the enhanced fluidity of the metal ensures complete filling of the mold. So, enhanced fluidity of the material in the sense that uh, this slurry can reach and uh, because the grain size is actually very small and it can reach uh, exactly the the every corner of the uh, of the mold. It is easy to reach for this to every corner of the mold and in this case the enhanced fluidity is uh, there because of the fine grain structure is possible to achieve or we are filling this thing the mixture of the solid and liquid we are trying to divert this thing and of course, that interface is also important the interface between the mold wall and this uh, semi solid component uh, both are responsible. So, that the interface resistance is not much to flow of the this semi solid component to enter in the uh, mold cavity. So, that is why this is another advantage we can uh, possible to achieve the complete filling of the mold during the uh, by producing the semi solid also. And already mentioned the fine and very uniform grain structure is possible to achieve in this particular case because uh, we here the liquid metal or partially liquid metal is basically associated with some kind of the shearing action. So, that enhance the uh, are able to reach very fine and the uniform grain structure uh, for this particular process. Now, that is why with this typical characteristics of the semi solid component the, the semi solid processing is also used to produce the various near net safe manufacturing techniques. It is highly applicable to produce the near net safe manufacturing techniques the semi solid processing is also applicable. So, that is these are the all typical advances associated with the semi solid processing. Now, once we uh, look into these are the different solidification techniques. Now, overall 
you can see that other solidification techniques in general I am talking about the what are the different solidification techniques. The types of the solidification techniques also included the directional solidification, progressive solidification and eutectic solidification. We have learned to some extent about the eutectic solidification, but we will try to define here what is the directional solidification and what is the progressive solidification uh, techniques. Uh, associated with the different solidification techniques. So, basically this type of the solidification uh, types of the solidification is actually defined based on that how it is converted from the liquid to the solid during the cooling process. Based on that we can categorize this thing the direction solidification, progressive solidification and eutectic solidification. Now, to understand the directional solidification it is understood that solidification to occurs one particular direction if it is promote one particular direction, but this is not the direction solidification is a not a natural solidification process. It has to be directed one particular direction. So, in this case liquid metal or I can say the solid liquid uh, the interface will move one particular direction or in particular direction, but we have to drive this movement of this the font one particular direction we look into the, the different by controlling the different parameters. So, generally occurs from one end to the other end of a mold. So, mold is there whatever respective of it is expected that if this is the mold one if we pour the liquid metal here and then fill with the mold. So, it is expected that normal we have observed the solidification start actually from the wall and then gradually it is moves toward the center depending upon the parameters the which direction the temperature gradient is the maximum based on that the nucleation uh, occurs and it, it gain growth occurs one particular direction. So, this kind of the solidification is basically not the direction of solidification because it is not moving one particular direction. So, it is randomly moving uh, with respect to uh, one uh, without any specific direction. So, that is why it is not the solid direction of solidification. So, therefore, if the movement of the solidified font in a particular direction is controlled by properly modulating the cooling rate and thermal gradient because we know that G and R temperature gradient and the, uh, the growth rate these are the usually these two are the solidification parameters and combining these two parameters we can decide the solidification mode and the cooling rate also we can estimate. So, therefore, that is why it is a cooling rate and the thermal gradient and temperature gradient these both are responsible or by controlling these two it is possible to maintain the to move the solidification front one particular direction. So, therefore, unidirectional aligned grains and because in this case if you uh, the if there is a uh, achievement of the directional solidification then it is having specific advantage that unidirectionally aligned grain one particular direction the all grains will be the aligned along with the some preferred direction crystallographic orientation can also be able to achieve or can be obtained in the directional solidification technique. So, it is having definitely some specific interest is there if we put some kind of the directional properties on preferred direction then say we allow to pro follow some kind of the aligned grains in this particular direction or along with the preferred crystallography orientation direction in this particular direction which direction the solidification front moves. So, that is with, the, with uh, achieve this specific uh, objective then direction solidification usually occurs. Now, here we can understand that better uh, the what are the steps to achieve the direction of solidification and for the fabrication of the directionally solidified component. So, it is a simple way we can say that I am talking about in principle that there is a molten metal is there and one side it is furnace, another side it is the coolant is there. So, one side it is heating, another side the coolant is there. So, they basically uh, both are see the control the, the particular direction is possible to control the temperature gradient or cooling rate. So, mold is slowly pulled out from the surface into the coolant. So, this is the first step 1. Step 1 we can see that this molten metal uh, it is there and we are gradually putting towards the coolant. So, when it is contact with the coolant then nucleation will start which part is the cooling first. So, therefore, usually at the interface if you see the at this particular zone the coolant is much more it is interact with the coolant. So, that part the nucleation will, will start 
and other part will be the till it is the molten zone and that molten zone is maintained with the presence of the furnace. So, therefore, that molten zone will not find out any kind of the nucleation. So, nucleation occurs at the coolant zone and nucleation starts from this point. Now, at this gradually if we put uh, this uh, container molten metal uh, just start start uh, nucleation this thing enter when it is interact with the coolant. So, if we put gradually towards the coolant part then it will try to grow uh, this particular direction because in this particular direction the temperature gradient will be the maximum because it is a high temperature zone this is the low temperature. So, definitely in this direction that and I assume that this high temperature zone is the uniform temperature it is also uniform temperature. So, whatever temperature gradient will occurs or that particular direction. So, high temperature low temperature. So, gradient is there uh, along this direction. So, that is why this growth will occur crystal growth will occur along this particular direction. Now, if is finally, put the this this uh, container the this completely in the coolant side and finally, solidified and you can see the unidirectional the so columnar kind of the structure will form along this direction the orientation in this direction. So, this kind of the solidification we can we can control that uh, this cooling rate uh, one particular direction and along this direction we can control the growth of this thing such that a unidirectional growth is possible to achieve using this specific arrangement. So, that is why it is fully solidified unidirectional structure is possible, but uh, one important part is there since the, the columnar structure is from one particular direction. So, any very specific property is possible to achieve in this, this direction, but it the properties can be weak in the other direction the other lateral direction properties may not be good also. So, other direction properties can be uh, weak uh, this thing. So, that is the one point associated with the directional solidified. Here you can see some more points also directional solidification techniques. So, properly aligned grains provide the superior strength definitely properly aligned grains if you make the very proper way the, the direction or direction the strength will be superior and specific microstructural feature features is also possible to achieve. We can see the more or less columnar kind of the structure direction in one direction is possible to achieve in this particular process. And proper alignment results in the formation of the columnar gains that I already mentioned, but in this case the improved material properties that one particular direction. So, the direction solidification technique is actually applicable or usually used to fabricate the component to achieve the directional properties also such as important in case of the turbine blade and high performance materials. So, turbine blades may be one, uh, one direction the properties the strength should be much more. So, that is why we can follow the direction solidification in, in, uh, in the turbine blades we, we can follow the when you make the turbine blade it follows the directional solidification and in any kind of the high performance materials if you want to achieve one particular direction specific properties then directional solidification can be followed for this particular material. But it is uh, even for the directional solidification it is also uh, might be have associated with some kind of the defects such as porosity shrinkage might occur and but segregation might occur but all can be minimized in directional solidification techniques as compared to the other the solidification processes. So, therefore, the results can be the structurally homogeneous and the sound material. So, structurally it can be homogeneous and uh, sound material is possible to using the directional solidification uh, technique. Now, we look into the other solidification process that is called the progressive solidification. Progressive sol it is actually the progressive solidification is very general term and the, the progressive solidification is defined in, in such a way that it is associated with the gradual and continuous transformation of the from material liquid state to solid. So, the transformation should be continuous gradual and continuous and without predetermined orientation of the grain. So, for example, directional solidification we have the objective we having some the grain orientation we can control in the directional solidification by promoting the temperature gradient one particular directions during the solidification process. But in this case there is no such predetermined orientation this thing it is a kind of the kind of the random process random solidification random growth kind of occurs uh, this process, but the process should be the gradual and continuous. So, it 
basically occurs in the naturally occurs when any kind of the liquid metal is uh, the solidify and, and results is basically more random microstructure is usually formed in case of the progressive solidification process. But the resulting microstructure is actually determined by the several factors for example, the what cooling rate is there, what kind of the alloy composition is there, what kind of the mold digits we are following. So, such that we, we do not apply any kind of the uh, directive, uh, directive uh, force in these cases to modify the microstructure and uh, uh, um, in case of the progressive solidification techniques. So, in general we can say that any natural solidification can be a progressive solidification process, but in general it can be gradual and continuous process. But since microstructure is non-uniform therefore, properties of the material can vary across the structure. So, we can see that microstructure can be uh, non-uniform. We observe in a simple casting process, we can see that here the equiac structure is there, then columnar structure is there and in the center the equiac structure. So, in this cases we can say it is a kind of the random microstructure forms, there is no directive, it is a natural solidification, it usually forms this kind of the structure. So, properties can vary across the structure that is very obvious. Now, since uneven growth might happen during the solidification front and that may associate it with kind of the defects such as the porosity and sinkage uh, is a part of this uh, any kind of the uh, progressive solidification techniques. Here you can see the schematic representation of the progressive and directional solidification in a casting process. In a we can see that suppose this is the mold, this is the liquid metal is there. Now, in liquid metal is there and if you put this particular zone, if you zoom it and here if you control uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, directional solidification is possible to achieve and in this particular zone, in this very specific zone the or very confined area or very localized area, this directional solidification might happen in this case if gets the favorable conditions for that. So, here in when there is a directional solidification occurs in this case planar movement of the solidification front perpendicular to the mold wall usually moves. So, perpendicular to the mold wall planar solidification front moves, but uniform material properties at the directional solidification section it is basically it is achieved uh, in the uh, this uh, in, uh, in the, uh, as compared to the direction of the um, uh, solidification front. But same other part might be happen suppose here we can see this is the uh, this is the very planar structure. So, I can say here, but this is the there is a corner is there. So, this part if you pick up and if you zoom it here the solidification follow the progressive solidification. We see that the solid part is there already a liquid is here, but the heat flow is basically converging here. So, that means the heat flow is the flux is not uniform the structure because of the presence of the some curvature here. So, here you can expect some kind of the random growth of the solidified component or solidification front and this is very natural cooling promotes and we observe the it is a very natural cooling happens it can promote the progressive solidification and of course, non-uniform metal properties possible to achieve in, in case of the uh, progressive solidification process. I mean to say that if you look into the overall whole big structure of a during the casting uh, process uh, depending on the mold uh, cast mold material cast material. So, some part it can be promoted to form that directional solidification process and remaining other, uh, some part might be possible to get some kind of the progressive solidification and we can very clearly distinguish that how the progressive solidification is different from the directional solidification by using this particular example. Now, we are talking about the uh, other solidification technique that is the third one eutectic solidification. Although we have little bit explained about the eutectic solidification, but overall we can uh, the eutectic solidification is uh, very much important to understand and it is associated with the, the more towards the composition of the alloy and associated with the single uh, it is a not single uh, the associated with the basically binary alloy system. And that we observe the eutectic solidification occurs in case of the binary solidification process that we already observed and we have already discussed. Now, here you can see that 
this type of the solidification absorbed in particular alloy system. So, eutectic not all the alloy system is may not produce some kind of the eutectic composition, but this particular alloy composition they create the eutectic solidification. So, there might be having the system might be having two or more alloying elements they can produce the uh, eutectic solidification. Now, how you can define the eutectic solidification? In this case, the during solidification suppose alloy composition reach some particular component that is called the eutectic composition. Uh, a simultaneous solidification of the two different phases occurs and combining these two different phases it produces some particular structure it forms. So, that is called the eutectic structure or eutectic composition or eutectic solidification and that occurs at the eutectic temperature. So, I mean to say that here this is more important in the eutectic solidification that simultaneous solidification of the two or more phase actually occurs. We have some bring some example also. So, eutectic point here you can see that it is a liquid phase is there and liquid phase is con gradually solidifying. So, it is a particular composition in this particular composition it is creating the eutectic composition such that when liquid con decompose into two different phases alpha and beta and they can consist one particular structure usually the lamellar structure or fiber structure of the two different phases coexist together in case of the eutectic solidification process. So, here as an example this this particular temperature this particular temperature and this particular composition they create the eutectic solidification and of course the after eutectic solidification this is a composition two different phases alpha plus beta phase mixture is usually occurs and that mixture is known as the eutectic composition and which temperature eutectic re reaction occurs that is called the eutectic temperature and this eutectic reaction whether it occurs or not it actually from the phase the equilibrium phase diagram diagram we will are able to understand that whether there is a eutectic equation occurs or not. But the microstructure depends on the different cooling condition of an alloy system. So, definitely the microstructure uh, combining then alpha and beta phase it depends entirely depends on the what are the cooling uh, rate uh, cooling condition um, where the this equation occurs or at the same time what kind of the alloy system. So, different alloy system they create the different type of the structure. Now, to understand the more on the eutectic solidification we can going back to the this particular uh, solidification techniques if you remember then we can explain the solidification occurs under equilibrium solidification techniques or equilibrium solidification process and other two cases was the the no diffusion in the solid phase and the perfect mixing in the liquid phase and other case the no diffusion in the solid and diffusional mixing in the liquid phase. In these three different cases we can use the binary phase diagram to understand what the solidification occurs. I am just repeating the same thing just to relate with the eutectic solidification in this particular case. Now, if I observe the no diffusion in the solid phase that means if we observe in the binary phase alloy we start the liquid phase at this particular point in this particular composition x0 which is at the temperature of T1. T1 is the liquidus temperature it means that composition is the liquid phase. Now, it is changing the phase during the solid from liquid phase to solid phase. Now, at intermediate temperature T2 at this temperature in this case the solid phase having composition less than x0 what was the initial composition and liquid phase having composition which is more than x0 and that is xl in this particular case. Here is the xl and is the xs is the but that is that composition should have at the under equilibrium condition. So, therefore, when we following the no deposition in the solid phase that means we are not allowing deposition to occur in the solid phase because at the intermediate temperature suddenly one liquid is having composition x0 and then immediately it converted to the solid, but that solid phase having the composition at this time is the xs which is less than that of this thing. So, too it cannot accommodate until and unless we are allowing some kind of the diffusion. So, therefore, what was the composition was at the initial phase of the at particular uh, temperature is reaching the solidification during the solidification process it will try to maintain. So, at temperature T1 may be composition is very close to this uh, composition. Uh, which is uh, this k x 0 it will try to follow or if there is a small deposition to occur over the time it is close to that composition in the solid phase which is not exactly following the this thus this this particular line this slope it is not following but this slope is followed in case of the 
equilibrium solidification condition, but here it is not equilibrium solidification occurred. So, the solid phase is following this composition, but since we are applying the perfect mixing in the liquid phase, we are externally applying some kind of the steering action for the liquid phase. Therefore, liquid phase will try to follow this line or maybe may not follow this thing thing uh, this uh, during the uh, during the cooling phase. So, therefore, uh, in this case now when one reach the T 3 temperature ideally or equilibrium condition the solidification should complete and in this case solidification complete in this case the solid phase is having the composition of the X 0, but if the close to the temperature T 3 or the liquid phase is having the composition which is much more which is x0 by k which is much higher than that of the x0. I mean to say that uh, if last drop of the liquid is converted to the solidify the temperature is close to T3, it is liquid phase is having the composition of close to x0 by k, but when then from x0 by k it is converting to the, the solid is the x0. So, therefore, suddenly trying to con converting this thing. So, therefore, if we further uh, reducing the temperature, then the all liquid the liquid phase might not be having to reach the composition close to the x0 by k or solid the solid can uh, solid phase might not be having the composition of close to x0. So, therefore, when the last drop of the liquid is solidified in this case, it might be having further lowering the temperature the composition can reach up to the, the eutectic composition, here the eutectic composition, but that is the limit of the eutectic composition, it can reach up to that, that point and before that the when reaching this particular point the solidification may terminate. So, I mean to say that if there is a no deposition in the solid phase perfect mixing in the liquid phase, the solidification may terminate close to the TE composition that eutectic composition and with the formation of the eutectic structure that is a mixture of the alpha plus beta phase that we observe. So, in this case the solidification may terminate close to the T e. So, here at this point you mean to say that two simultaneous different phases will form at this particular and that gradually reducing the temperature during the solidification process the limitation is up to the eutectic temperature. Then here the termination occurs solidification this thing. But other way when you are allowing the no diffusion in the solid phase, but diffusional mixing in the liquid phase. So, diffusional mixing in the definitely system can reach the steady state. In this case the balance of the diffusion and the cooling and the solidification process must exist, but it will always reach to the eutectic composition. So, definitely when diffusional mixing in the liquid phases occurs the the ahead of the solidification form there is a the gradient the solute rejected by the solid phase will be the uh, in this the in front of the solid interface there is a the the concentration of the liquid phase will basically will increase the liquid composition will in, in increase in close to the solid liquid interface phase. So, therefore, it will by lowering the temperature for the solidification to occur it will always reach to the eutectic temperature, but once we reach the eutectic temperature then solidification will terminate then it create the eutectic composition at this particular point. So, therefore, the alloy system easily associated with the eutectic solidification. And in these two cases, one case is it may not, it may terminate the close to the TE or other cases it will always reaches to the eutectic point or that means it will always create the eutectic composition or eutectic reaction for the solidification of the binary alloy. So, here we can distinguish the three other solid different solidification techniques what are the different uh, microstructure and, and uh, microstructure difference in the directional progressive and the eutectic solidification we can observe here also. So, here directional solidification we can see this uh, you can see there is a kind of the one direction the structure is formed this is very obvious and progressive solidification we can see there is a random microstructure in there and eutectic solidification we can see some specific structure is there a lamellar kind of structure alternating layer of the alpha phase and the beta phase and it will create some kind of the lamellar structure and that is the typical characteristics of the eutectic solidification. So, here we see the difference of the structure, microstructure in case of the directional solidification, progressive solidification and eutectic solidification. And here also now uh, this is all about the uh, different solidification techniques and uh, 
so for whatever we have discussed the the solidification techniques of the different ticks uh, the uh, uh, different types of the solidification associated uh, with the either casting process or welding process welding processes and here we have tried to understand that that how the manufacturing process is linked with the solidification process or whether the solidification behavior is uh, different in case of the welding and the casting process also at the same time what are the driving ports that actually makes the difference the the semi solid processing as compared to the that uh, conventional casting processes and at the same time we, we have tried to understand what is the rapid solidification what are the typical characteristic of the rapid solidification so all these factors and uh, related to the solidification or techniques uh, related to this uh, different solidification we have we, i have tried to explain in this particular module now uh, next class we will try to discuss the uh, some kind of the simulation techniques associated with the uh, different solidification uh, uh, processes. So, that will make you understand more clear that actually how the solidification occurs and, and, and is and through the visualization of the, the different solidification processes. So, that is all for today. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.